I will just warn you, this is going to be a long-winded video today. This is going to be story time. Well, not an ideal way to end a trip. Plus, it looks like a flat tire. There is no wheel studs left in there. <laughs> and a lot of metal. Looking at that, it doesn't look too bad. Everything sort of looks like it's still in place. So, I reckon the disc, I reckon the disc will be stuffed, but brake lines, sensors, everything else still looks good. Right, bye bye control. I was about half an hour out of Canberra. When I started to realize things were going wrong, I started to get a bit of a vibration in the steering. I thought it might have been road vibration. So I instantly killed cruise control, started to slow down, and then within seconds it all fell to bits. One thing that did happen though, is when I stopped, I actually recovered five of the wheel studs. So basically they all fell out of the wheel. So the inertia of it spinning around managed to keep them in. So obviously I'd lost one wheel stud prior somewhere. So initially what I thought is I thought some silly bastard hit these with a rattle gun. I don't believe that to be the case anymore. What I'm thinking the main issue was is the wheel nuts I had on this, cheap nasty wheel nuts that I got with the wheels, I was actually gonna replace them. And my mechanic, when I put the wheels on, my mechanic mate said to me, you probably should change them nuts. And I just put it on the back burner and went, yep, I will eventually get to that. The main reason I wanted to change them was just to have black nuts, um, obviously to match the black wheel. What I didn't realize at the time is the nuts weren't the right nut for the stud or the wheel. So whilst they threaded on, they're a tapered nut. These actually need a shouldered nut because it's got no hub centric spacer in it. So I'll pull it apart and I'll show you what it looks like under and then we'll talk about what Nissan wanted to replace first, what the mechanic I ended up taking the car to changed. So when it all originally fell to bits, and it was all still sit within the wheel and on the ground, it was okay. So you could see the damage, you could see the studs, you could see the disc. So what I was expecting is I needed a full set of studs, not just for this wheel, but for the whole car. So what went through my mind is I went, you know what? If these six studs are stuffed, the likelihood is that the other 18 are, let's replace all the studs. Because the disc was running around the rim, it actually smashed the wheel. Well, we'll grab that wheel and show you. So this here is the original wheel that was on it. You see that cracking all through the outside there. So basically what happened, that's inside the wheel where the disc was running around it. And then if you look at the center ball, that was where the thread of the CV was running around it. As a result of smashing the wheel, we ended up killing the tire. We ended up blowing a hole in one of the sidewalls after it was running flat already. With the tires, I wasn't too phased about that because I actually ran a 295 Kumo spare anyway. So I went, you know what, new set of studs, change the disc, throw the factory wheel back on it, we'll get home, we'll sort out the tyres and we'll sort out a new wheel. So I ran my roadside assist, organised a flatbed, they rocked up and we dragged it up onto the flatbed. As we were dragging it onto the flatbed, it started to spit the wheel. So in the end, we had to high lift jacket, pull the wheel out from under it, drop the disc onto the tray of the flatbed, and then we dragged it up with missing a wheel, which was probably one of the best things that could have happened. Because once we dropped the wheel off it, I had a good look at everything that was broken on the inside. So I took a heap of photos so I knew what was wrong with it. With the roadside assistance, they said, oh, we'll just take it to Nissan. I went, yep, look, if that's who you normally take it to, that's fine, take it to Nissan. We'll, I'll give them a call and let them know it's coming. I don't want to talk bad about any business, but my faith in Nissan in Canberra was really quickly taken away. Called them, let them know it was coming. Yep, we'll give you a call, too easy. So at this point I went, stuff it, I'm going home. We'll make the 500 k's home and then I'll deal with it another day. And so I rang Nissan in Canberra and said, hey, you should have got my car on a flatbed. It'll be the one missing a wheel. And they said, oh, we don't have anyone that can talk to you. So I went, too easy. And they said, we'll get someone to ring you back. So three hours go by, still haven't heard from Nissan. So I rang him again. I got the same story. Oh, sorry, we don't have anyone that can talk to you. Everyone's busy. We'll get them to ring you back. And at this point I said, no, nah, put me on hold. I'll just, whenever someone can answer the phone, I'll talk to them. So in the end, the tech that I spoke to on day one, they knew it was coming, I spoke to him. I said, oh, look, did you guys get a chance to have a look at it? And they said, oh yeah, no, we had a look at it. It's gonna be much more than wheel studs. So I said, yeah, that's fine, let me know. What are, we, what are we looking at? And he goes, okay, so you'll need a new set of studs. That'll cost you 180 bucks. And I went, yep, too easy. Oh, that seems cheap for 24 studs. And he goes, no, no, that's six. And I went, oh, well, that seems expensive for six studs. So I went, you know what, who cares? It is what it is. If it's gonna cost me 800 bucks for studs, whatever. And he goes, you'll need a new disc. And I went, yep, agreed. Don't know what impact the disc has taken. It was at 110, change the disc. So we're looking at 200 bucks for the disc. He said, you'll need a new backing plate. I think that was 130 bucks. I went, yep, too easy. And then he goes, you'll need a new CV. And I went, okay. I said, why do I need a new CV? Oh, well, it's stuffed. 
And I went, okay, look, at this point, I'm looking at the photos on my phone whilst I didn't speak at. And he said, the CV will cost you 1500 bucks. And I went, 1500 bucks? I'm not spending 1500 bucks on a CV that I'm likely to break. It doesn't make sense to waste that money. He goes, oh, we can only put factory Nissan parts. And I went, yep, yeah, I can accept that. I said, I just don't understand why it needs a CV. And he goes, oh no, because well, we need a new hub. <laughs> I went, you need a new hub? And he goes, yeah, we need to put a new hub in it. And I went, why does it need a new hub? And so what he said to me is, the studs have stripped the thread out of the hub. I said, well, hold on. Are, the, are you telling me that the studs are threaded into the hub? I'm under the impression they're a press stud. So at this point, I started Googling to see the studs and found them on patrol apart and sure as shit, they were a press stud. Because yeah, you know, no, you can see where the thread is all been stripped out of the hub. And I went, okay. I said, have you guys pulled this apart? And he said, oh no, we haven't pulled it apart. I said, well, hold on. I said, the thread that you're looking at, you're looking at the disc. I said, I can still see the ends of the studs in the hub. He goes, oh, well, the hub's gonna cost you 1,500 bucks. So at this point I've gone, well, there's three grand worth of parts that I don't need. <laughs> so anyway, by the time we were done and dusted, he said to me, you're looking at $7,000. He said, you're gonna put this through insurance. And at this point I've gone, holy crap, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I should have stayed on the side of the road and fixed it myself. After that conversation, I rang my insurance company. I told them the story. And I said, look, what they're telling me and what I was looking at is a completely different story. I said, get a flatbed and get it out of there. I said, I don't care where you take it, just take it wherever you're normally repairing. Down to auto came kind of what went, come back with a quote and I said, look, it's gonna cost you 1500 bucks to fix it. That's including a new wheel. Um, if you wanna do all the studs, you're looking at 2400 bucks in total with all the labor. I went, look, 2400 bucks, that's fine. Organize it, I'll just pay for it. So for the sake of me putting off changing a hundred odd bucks worth of nuts, and it was never a money issue, it was just a, I forgot about it issue. I ended up costing myself 2,400 bucks in the end. The only thing that I wasn't happy with, with the Autoco guys is the price I paid for the wheel. So for the new wheel, I ended up paying 530 bucks, I think it was, which was crazy for a KMC mess up, but Supply, demand, they could get it, who cares, put it on. It's my stuff up, I'll take it, whatever. So because I smashed the tire, I ended up deciding that I'd replace four tires because I was getting due for tires anyway. So I ended up going with the Yoko Geolander G003 uh, in the 35, 12 and a half R18. Now, one thing I will say is the actual size of these tires, overall diameter, is very marginal compared to the Kumos, the 295 Kumos that were on here but the width is significantly wider. And of course, the biggest thing was supply and demand. It was bloody hard to get tires yet again. So, but we got a set and uh, so far I'm pretty happy with them. But tires will be a topic for another video. I will actually do a review on them Kumos because whilst I didn't love them, I also think they're good in some points. So we're talking to the guys at Autocade Mechanical. I said, look, we need to understand why this happened. So I said to them, I said, look, it didn't have hub centric spaces on the back of the wheels and I knew it didn't. Um, and in my head, I thought the tapered nuts would be enough to hold it centered and would work. As always, it's important to note, I'm not a mechanic. I've got no formal qualifications. I've been playing with cars for a lot of years. Um, what I actually did in this instance is my father has been a heavy diesel mechanic for ever in his life. This is, and this is how I worked out the problem is I actually rang my old man and said, Hey, I need your help. I need to understand what happened and why it happened. Long story short, basically he said to me, I'm not surprised the effing wheel fell off. <laughs> And he's right. <laughs> Basically, my understanding of this now is you either need a shouldered tapered nut like this. So you can see it's got the taper and then it's got a little bit of a shoulder. So on that shoulder actually sits within the wheel. So if you look at the hole, that actually sits pretty flush with the hole of the wheel. So it does two things. One, it puts all the side pressure on the shoulder of the nut. And then looking at the inside of the nut, there's actually a lot more thread engaged on the stud. So we'll just show these studs side by side. They're the new shouldered studs, they're the old studs. Extends a lot more down the stud. So there's a big difference in them. Now, I did try and tape this up and put a set of vice grips on it and get it apart to show how little thread is actually engaged in this, but it's probably somewhere around the end of the taper. But what I think happened is when I was in low range early in the trip, I think I actually fractured a stud. It was still connected enough to stay in there. I'll add in a little bit of footage early on in the trip where I actually heard a loud audible like pop and I went oh I wonder what that was when it happened on the day I didn't think anything of it I thought it was just, just spring seat movement or something like that in hindsight I think that's when I actually broke the first start I think
think over the trip, all the driving force factors of the torque multiplication of low range, I think that's all weak in the rest of the studs because one's no longer holding on doing its job, so it's relying on five studs. It was probably lucky that it all failed close to Canberra and not out in the middle of nowhere. As I've gotten older, I like to think that I learn lessons quicker, but this is a lesson that will stick with me for a long time. For the sake of 100 bucks worth of wheel nuts, I would have saved myself 2,400 bucks. <laughs> this is why I'm making this video. If you've got a Y62 Patrol, pull your nuts, make sure you've got a shoulder nut, or at least make sure you've got a hub centric spacer. While I can look back at this now and have a bit of laugh, I still think I was extremely lucky. And not just for me, but for everyone else around me. Because realistically, if this ended up worse and I crashed my car and caused a lot more damage, I can live with that. It's only money, it's only a car. But the reality is, is that if that wheel come off at 110 kilometers an hour and went into traffic, there's real potential that it could have seriously hurt someone. It would have wrecked someone's day, it could have even killed someone. And if that actually happened, I don't know how I would have lived with myself. So why I learned this lesson the hard way, I can't stress enough, check your nuts. Check your nuts, make sure you've got tapered shoulder nuts, make sure you've got a hub centric spacer, make sure it's right because this could have ended a lot worse than what it did. In hindsight, I'm really grateful that it ended the way it did and everything that happened happened the way it did because I couldn't have got any luckier. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. There's a heap of talking points in this video, how lucky I got, the amount of parts Nissan wanted to replace, tapered shoulder nuts versus hub centric spacers, I'd love to hear it all. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it because this one is one that not in my wildest dreams did I expect to happen to me. And when it did, I was bloody shocked. <laughs> if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And until next time, guys, go travel.